morning. I'm Dr. Yusuf. I'll be presenting to you this uh, case of uh, pseudo exfoliation with small pupil. Uh, she had a cortical and nuclear cataract, and uh, the pupil was about about four millimeters in size, and uh, she had a shallow chamber, so I didn't want to implant the uh, the mortal pupil expansion ring. And I try to avoid as much as I can the uh, the use of the flexible retractors as uh, it creates about four or five extra wounds in the uh, the eye and it takes time to implant. And if we if I can do it without, we'll we'll do. Okay. The good thing about the uh, the small pupil due to scarring like pseudoexfoliation syndrome rather than the uh, IFS intraoperative floppy iris syndrome is that this pupil is stable. So it stays the same size through the surgery, it doesn't get smaller. Uh, IFS patients, they can start with much larger pupil and they get smaller and smaller and unstable during the procedure, which makes it much more annoying. So for example, if a patient with this size pupil, due to Flomax, I'll implant uh, the, uh, the uh, Morsha pupil expansion ring rather, or uh, use the flexible retractors, but I will not do it without uh, having some support but for a patient that had stable pupil like pseudoexfoliation it's w I can do without it especially if the cataract is not too too big okay with a little help of some of the instruments we use uh, during the procedure uh, we can do uh, cautiously very uh, like a, what we call slow motion phaco uh, to uh, to remove this cataract safely and effectively it's very important during the, the if you manage a patient with pseudoexfoliation is that you should not put any stress on the zonules because they are already weak and uh, any small stress during phaco during the lens implants you can end up with dialysis of the uh, of the zonules and uh, you end up you might need a capsular retention ring for that so it's here you have to be very very gentle and take your time to do it remove the cataract okay uh, and when i see those patients at the office i offer them actually cataract extraction sooner than the other patients multiple benefits of removing uh, pseudo exfoliation uh, cataracts earlier first of all if the pressure does not usually if 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 they didn't have pressure probably they won't have pr high pressures afterwards okay if they started to have high pressure and you move your the cataracts, usually the pressure drops down. Patients with pseudoexfoliation glaucoma, if you remove those cataracts early, a lot of them they, res they reverse actually, and uh, the, the the glaucoma disappears. Uh, if the pressure did not drop, I'll do an SLT, selective laser trabeculoplasty to lower the pressure and usually when the pressure drops down that way the pressure stays down but the of course they are followed the rest of their life for the pressures because sometimes the pressure can start to rise late uh, during this procedure so you can see that I'm doing a very slow phaco uh, just making sure that these, uh, there's no stress on the zonule during the procedure and stay away from the pupil Okay, very slowly you have to remove the cataracts I use a lot of chopping uh, rather than phaco. My phaco powers are very low, and uh, mostly it's a mechanical breakdown, and just the phaco will just res remove the pieces and uh, take it out of the eye. But uh, a lot of it is a mechanical. Now, this is the epinucleus. You have to be, be extra careful here because of the small pupil, you might not see clearly the edge of the capsule rexus. So, you might be actually pulling the capsule rexus edge rather than the epinucleus, so have to be extra, extra careful. Uh, you have visually, uh, see the, the capsular axis edge when, while doing that, you can see it just inside the pupil here, uh, the pupil edge. And uh, just take your time, do the rotation very carefully, not to stress the zonule. And uh, uh, if, if you're troubled by not seeing very well, you can implant the, the mortar pupil expansion ring, you can use uh, retractors, but if you, you're cautious, you can do it without it. Uh, you can stain the capsule. I frequently, when I have a visu problem visualization uh, of the 
I stain with uh, the myth uh, uh, with the uh, vision blue to uh, to be able to see the capsorexis through the edge. You can see the edge of the capsorexis very close to the uh, pupil edge. The nice thing about the J cannula is that you can uh, clean the capsule blindly actually without seeing or, or risking capturing the areas that you don't see underneath the pupil. But be cautious with the with using J cannula in small pupil case, especially if it's an IFS case. Uh, iris prolapse is very easy to happen. So in these cases, I press a little on the uh, on the wound to 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 make the 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 fluid come out to the eye easy uh, uh, without having to push the iris out through the wound uh, the uh, it's 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 very important to uh, to be cautious there I refill the J cannula because uh, sometimes to, because those cases I don't want to press a lot on the on uh, to uh, extract the cortex I take my time here uh, and uh, keep an eye on the uh, the iris, the subincisional iris, to see if the, there's any prolapse of the iris, and uh, if the, there is a prolapse uh, to happen, I just decrease the amount of pressure I'm, I'm using, and uh, I'm done with the cortical cleanup. Uh, now I'll, uh, I'll implant the lens I'm using Helon uh, to inflate the capsule. Uh, my nurses, uh, you know, uh, you know that I don't score the cornea during the procedure because I use the gel. Uh, at the beginning and it just stays through the surgery just uh, I don't need to score the cornea or clean it up here uh, here we have to be extra careful with the lens implant because sometimes we put a lot of stress on the zonule uh, underestimating uh, how much uh, stress and uh, had quite a few cases that uh, had the small dialysis at this stage uh, uh, with pseudo exfoliation so if you have a problem implanting it in one stage like I did here, you can actually uh, just take your time and use a Sinski to not to stress the zonule. It's the most important thing doing those cases is not to, not to stress the zonule. Now I'm doing a cortical cleanup uh, using the uh, IA. Now that the lens is in place, the capsule is protected. I can use high vacuums and uh, with no risk of uh, capturing the capsule. That's the nice thing about using the J, can the J cannula for cortical cleanup. It, you delay the eye irrigation aspiration till the end, where it's safe now that the lens is in place. And uh, this way you don't capture the capsule and result in the capsule tear. Okay, this case went really well. Um, uh, in our area here in uh, uh, northern New Brunswick, we have a lot of pseudoxfoliation families, and that's uh, very, very common findings in a, in a typical day for example 18 cases uh, you can find four or five uh, cases of pseudo exfoliation so uh, I've learned to how to manage those uh, I had a little bit of uh, harder uh, cortical material I had to break down with the with the Y cannula uh, through the IA uh, just so I'm using the, I can, uh, the Y cannula to push the iris around to make sure that there's nothing hiding uh, uh, behind the uh, iris, um, when you do small pupils, you have to make sure that the uh, the anterior chamber is clear of the cortical material because these are the cases that you can get retained uh, cortical material with uh, postoperative iritis. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Bye bye.